The Joe Hirsch Turf Classic is a grade one. It's the sixth race on the Saturday card at Aqueduct or Belmont at Aqueduct. Uh, it's running a mile and a half on the turf for three-year-olds and up. And this is another one in the uh, Belmont Championship Meet Series. And um, contrary to the Woodward, this is a, uh, I think this is a really good field. Um, you've got uh, in Warlike Goddess, you know, the hard-knocking Philly, uh, the, or Mayor now, uh, seven years old, still, uh, still prominent, still competitive. And this is her, uh, her dream distance. You've got Silver Knot for Charlie Appleby, who uh, I thought ran a rather disappointing sword dancer. And the winner of the sword dancer, Far Bridge, who surprised everybody by going to the lead and took them all the way. And uh, we'll have to see if uh, uh, they try to repeat that tactic. Got Get Smokin', who just came out of uh, a pretty bad uh, Kentucky Turf Cup. Uh, Daunt and Emmanuel, who are... Uh, Emmanuel is... Uh, Second start from Mike Maker after being sold and uh, uh, moving up to a grade one usually hasn't been uh, too successful in that regard. And then you've got Daunt, uh, who's a uh, a new uh, a new con competitor at the graded stakes level. So I think this is a pretty good field. Now, uh, it's interesting in that uh, you're certainly going to have a, a, a race shape that's got pace with Get Smoke in, in the field. Uh, Get Smoking ran, uh, was really surprising how uh, mediocre uh, the effort was from Get Smoking in the Turf Cup, um, having won that race the year before. Got off to a lead and, and uh, ran her uh, his uh, usual race, but um, just wasn't able to finish it. Uh, I didn't think they pressured uh, him terribly much on the front end. And you look at now, you know, he's getting up there now and, and you look at his pattern and he's kind of getting into that good race, bad race pattern. So maybe he can rebound here, but he is going to have some significant pressure, I think, from uh, Silver Knot. And if Far Bridge decides to go up on the front end again, um, won't get away easy and uh, might be, uh, I, I think Get Smoking's probably outclassed here. And and honestly, that uh, race was so uh, was so disappointing. I'm not really uh, sure that I, a, a rebound uh, rebounding effort here would even be uh, uh, would be competitive for a win. I, I just I, I don't think this horse can can beat the classier ones in this field. So I'm going to let Get Smoke and go. Uh, Silver Knot, uh, I thought was ran a. Uh, uh, I, I don't know that I was disappointed by this sword dancer because I liked uh, Measured Time, his stable mate, a lot more in that race. And to be honest, I still can't figure out how Measured Time didn't win that race. Uh, we got into the stretch and we met Far Bridge in the eye and there, there was like a, a tiniest of hesitations there and didn't keep going on with it. And it was really kind of... Surprising. I give more credit to Far Bridge and, and Joel Rosario for just a genius ride to put him on the front end. But uh, Silver Knot ran a uh, ran just an okay third, I guess you'd have to say. And you do have to wonder if it might have been a regression because his prior effort was his highest uh, Brisnet speed figure. But I think Silver Knot can come back. It's third off the layoff. Uh, the only thing that is a little curious is uh, that. Silver Knot's been running two races at a time and then going to the bench. Uh, it hasn't run three in a row since last year, and at three wasn't as good, but um, there wasn't, uh, you know, did that three race cycle wasn't necessarily a uh, uh, an improvement or wasn't necessarily building to a big effort. So uh, I think Silver Knot can rebound here, um, but I think um, there is still that specter of. Uh, still, you know, move, building back up to a top effort. And I certainly would have to believe that Charlie Appleby would want this one for the Breeders' Cup, uh, given his improved form this year. So uh, I'm not sure he's going to be tuned up all the way uh, for this one. But I think it can get into, uh, can get into the money uh, running up near the leaders. And, um, you know, I, I think on class alone probably can get into the money. Uh, Emmanuel is kind of tricky for me. I just don't think he's fast enough to beat 
the, the better horses in here. He's never been a good grade one performer. Uh, <clears throat> second race with Mike Maker, though, you know, stretching out, that's what Mike Maker does. So Emmanuel might be a sleeper in here, but uh, uh, again, this is another one that uh, didn't run so hot last time, and I think two back. Because he was going to be sold, they had really cranked him up. So I think he's working his way back into good form. Um, and, uh, I, I, you know, it's hard to like him here. Truly Quality is another one coming off a top, top effort that was significantly better than anything he had run before. This is a has been a pretty consistent horse up until that effort and uh, in the Colonial Cup. And you just sort of have to wonder if there's going to be a regression here. This is a big test uh, running up against the likes of Far Bridge, Warlike Goddess, and Silver Knot. And uh, again, I think a regression is is entirely possible here. So I don't really like true, truly quality in this spot. And that seems to be a pervasive theme. You know, you've got a lot of horses coming in here off of really big efforts. And uh, they're, they're vulnerable. So it's a really interesting uh, race from that perspective. I settled on Far Bridge. And the reason being is that Far Bridge has been always a pretty consistent sort. And he just seems to have uh, reached another level at four. Um, I like the sword dancer. I thought he ran a fantastic race. And um, I, he's just in good form. And I, I don't see any reason why he won't come back and run another top effort. Uh, so I like Far Bridge. Warlike Goddess, this is her distance. Um, you know, mile and a half, uh, Aqueduct. She's two for two with this track. Um, you know, she's very, again, very, has been very consistent. I don't see any reason why there'd be a regression. And, uh, I like more like Goddess in this spot and she would be uh, my second choice to Far Bridge. And I can easily see putting her on top, um, you know, cause she runs her race and she's going to be extremely tough in here. So we go to our wagering strategy. I'm going with Far Bridge on top. Uh, and then we're just going to do a 7-4 cold exacta uh, with Warlike Goddess. And then we'll do a 7-6 with Silver Knot. And then we'll do a key box with Far Bridge on top with Silver Knot and Warlike Goddess underneath. Then we'll do a tri cold trifecta, 7-4-6. Uh, then we'll do a, uh, a tri-key with 7 on top with 4-6 and 4-6. And then we'll go 7 on top with 4-6 with all because... Uh, get, because you've got a lot of horses who are vulnerable in here, it, it, it does lend itself to who's more vulnerable than who. Um, and uh, this is a, you know, so the way I'm looking at it is class is what's going to win out. And these are the three classiest horses in the race. Um, so that's the way we're going to go. I think you can mix and match uh, Far Bridge and Warlike Goddess. Just not as confident about Silver Knot and... Uh, Hopefully this is the way it'll turn out, but it should be a really good race. It should be a good betting race just from uh, the perspective of that we've got uh, some vulnerability for quite a few horses in this race. Hope this analysis helps you with your own wagering strategy. Wish you the best of luck as always. We're going to have more postings for Belmont at Aqueduct, uh, Churchill Downs, and hopefully we'll get some Santa Anita in there as uh, they've got the California Cup or California Crown this weekend. Uh, so there'll be a lot of individual, individual postings, and uh, we'll hopefully try to find a pick five sequence for those of you who like to play them uh, later on this week. So that's it from here. I'll talk to you soon, and until then, be well.